check this out. Empty, that plate rack weighs 12 ounces. You heard me right, 12 ounces, well under a pound. Someone is getting the message about how light and fast is the way to go. And that someone is, you guessed it, Blue Force. We visited with them in shot 2013. We said hey to Ryan, to Brittany, had a great visit with them. Checked out all their gear. I have several reviews out on Blue Force gear stuff. The 10 speed rigs are still amazing to me because like this rack, they are very light and fast and ultra high quality. Made right here in the good old USA as well. So this is gonna be a really fast review, believe it or not. Just gonna to get to the details to get the word out on what I think is one of the best plate racks out there right now. And there's many, to be honest. This is one of my favorites, so. The real name is the Blue Force Gear Plate Minus. And it has a very unique construction. See this stuff right here on the back? In SHOT Show, I think I showed you a mannequin or something that had this on it. And I said this is kind of the wave of the future for colorizing LBE and perhaps even tactical apparel. When I mean colorizing, I'm saying putting a pattern on it, just like you see this multicam. This is called Ultra Comp Laminate. To me, it's kind of a Hypalon laminate. It's a fabric on one side probably a 500 denier, maybe a little bit lighter nylon. And then on the other side, it's a rubberized nylon. Flip it over so you can see, maybe roll a picture in. This stuff is tough, very tough. And it opens up a new way to create load bearing gear in a tactical environment. Something I've been discussing here in the Nut Fancy Project for a long time, how technology will advance and make the gear lighter and thinner. And that's exactly what we have with a plate minus. I mean, this comes in two sizes, by the way. The medium is 10 inches by 13 and a half. And uh, it's only 1.25, that is an inch and a quarter in width. And then the large, I think this one is a large, is 11 by 14, same width, one and a quarter inch. That, I mean, that's thin, guys. That's thin. I mean, you can't see it here. I'll roll in some photos as we go along here. Um, because this one's kind of loaded up. That's what I'm talking about. When we talk about firepower versus mobility in an LBE setting, and an LBE philosophy of use, we want something that's very light. You're not going to get everything with this rack, and don't expect you are. You're, you're always going to make decisions with your gear, what fits best with your system, your theater of operations, whoever you are, what's going on. For instance, you don't have a ton of room on a very trim, lightweight, and thin plate rack like this. Right on the front, I'm running these. Uh, it's a 10 speed triple M4 pouch. And incidentally, these have an amazing attachment system to them. Even better than the old attachment system. Here's a photo. This is an older generation of pistol 10 speed pouch and it has nylon straps on it that weaves into your molly and it's completely functional. I have several of these that we run and you know, and shoot with here in TMP. And these pouches overall, both the pistol variety and the rifle variety, remain my favorite. They're elasticized, yes. They will, will eventually stretch out on you a little bit. They will, like the current versions, current technology, once again, here we go. I mean, it's, we're just 2013 now. Who knows what's coming in the future? These will bleach out a little bit on you as you insert and extract the magazines over and over again. But you talk about a versatile magazine pouch. Uh, they rock. I have a video out on them. Uh, at least it's part of the 10 speed chest rig. I think I'm talking about them. They just accommodate so many different types of magazines. You probably cannot run an M M1A, M14 style of mag, a 308 battle mag, and these. I mean, these are 223 M4 varieties, obviously. You run flashlights. Heck, you can run pistols in them. I mean, I ran a SIG P227 in it, and it worked. No, I wouldn't go, you know, sprinting any length. Uh, with that system without having a retention strap but just for temporarily it works a smaller pistol flatter pistol like a sig 938 caltech pf9 something like that uh, in those pouches it'll secure quite nicely very nicely so good job on the pouches that's a nice upgrade on it but as you can see on a small lightweight trim plate carrier you're going to run out of room i definitely do not have room to run chest mounted pistol here and you can see I have an interference between my magazines. Those are from a Walther PPQ. 
and 30 round, you know, uh, P Max. Is that a showstopper? Not really. You could tuck it just like I'm doing here. It's not a big deal. Uh, what you might do is run 20s down here to get more, you know, area. But if you want more room, upgrade to a heavier and probably more expansive load bearing equipment option. So we showed you the, the ultra comp laminate. I'm a big fan of that. That's going to be pretty color fast too. And that's what we're seeing with these technological advancements coming out in the industry. This uh, M4 pouch with the elastic in it is not going to be nearly as color fast as this is. And speaking of color fast, here's that new webbing they've come out with. And this is called Invista Solution Dyed Cordura. If I'm getting the details right, I think I am. This is licensed multicam. That will add to the cost of the rig. And while we're here, check out this. This is called ITW Gillitex Low IR Hardware. I think that's the name of it. I think Fastex produces it, but it's low IR. Is that a huge deal? Uh, to the normal dude, I would say absolutely not because you're going to be carrying so many other things that are not low IR. What's it matter? I mean, this, your chain is only as strong as your weakest link. So if I'm running around with this SOG Field Pup, there's nothing low IR about that rig right there. So I don't really care if I have buckles that are low IR. That's just the way I think about it. Okay. The features on this plate minus rack are very trim and they're cut to the bare necessities, that which you need. So you're not going to have any built-in pockets. There's just no room for it except for, of course, your plates. Now, what I'm running on this right now, make sure I'm telling you right, is I have a Diamondback Tactical Fast Attack Plate Carrier Level 3A pistol plate in the front. You've seen it a lot. I'll just pop this out and show you the pocket while we're here. Look at the quality of the, the Velcro. Isn't that cool? And this part is actually, it's not mesh. It's actually it's something I think that's a little bit better. I've seen this material used in, guess what? Gators. Yeah, I have a pair of gators that uses this fabric and they breathe really nice. It's not totally waterproof. It can actually let water in and let water out. But when you're sweating a lot in a hot environment, it's a great fabric and I see they use it on the backside of the plate minus rack. But again, here's your pocket for your plate. Full size rifle plate if that's what you want to carry. The pocket is definitely reinforced enough to carry that eight pound plate if that's what you're running. I generally, depending on what's going on, would like to get away with running pistol plate, level 3A, just like we're doing here. On the back, I have DKX formed level 3A plate. I have a separate video out on that, and they're some of my favorite. Right there. And it's, you know, conformal, as you can see. I didn't run that on the front. I mean, I have one that has a swimmer's cut on it that I could run on the front, but it's tasked in another vest, so I just went soft on this one. And I, th I thought the soft pretty much created the type of rigidity I wanted on the front right here. Here's your shoulders on the plate minus. I like shoulders that are very trim. I don't really need for the loadouts I'm carrying. Uh, again, your mission may be completely different. Uh, I don't think I need shoulder straps, but if you do, they have them there on the website. They're at blueforcegear.com. And I think they're called... I wrote this down. Yeah, they call them LMAC. That's your, their catalog number. They're kind of expensive though. They're like 50 bucks. So I don't know. Think think before you do that or maybe you could repurpose some from another rig that you have and put them on, put them on here if you need them. I did not weigh this rig down like really heavy. I think the most I carried in it was about 20 pounds. Light and fast, man. I was going for the mobility side of the equation, no doubt. This part here, the shoulder is adjustable. So you can lengthen it, shorten it, and then you have some ca cable routing ties under here. So if you're running a radio, you can route underneath your shoulder strap, on top or on bottom, whatever you want to do. Personally, I'd probably route it on top if, I'm, if I don't have a molly pouch, uh, if I can speak, a molly pouch on top. That way I'm not pressing the weight of that tube into my shoulder. I like also how it has cuts, molly cuts going down each shoulder strap. And one reason I put the field pup on here is to illustrate how you could use that. Running a knife upside down, running a multi-tool pouch on it, any number of things, a flashlight pouch, flexi uh, flexicuffs, 
whatever you need, you have plenty of room. It's just really a clean rig. Notice on this, I don't route it all the way and close it because as this strap rounds your shoulder, you don't want that knife trying to make that, that bend with you. And always keep your shooting shoulder, wh whichever side you're on, left or right, unfettered, clean, clean as possible. It adjusts, and adjusts readily with just simple adjustment right here. I kind of wish it came with keepers, you know, colorized according to the camouflage pattern you get. Currently, it's available in Multicam, Coyote, Coyote, and Wolf Gray is what Blue Force Gear calls that color. And it's really cool. It's a real dull, unobtrusive color that works well in an urban environment. And actually, that gray can work very well in a variety of um, wilderness environments as well. Gray is a great color. Just easily. And then, yeah, I need to put keepers on here. Uh, it has a little section of elast uh, elastic on it. So as you flex, you're changing your shooting position, you're breathing, whatever, it'll go with you. I kind of loaded this one backwards because after I loaded, I was like, man, I should have put these fast tech, bu fast tech buckles towards the front. Much easier. But the plate's so small, so narrow, you can still get on. No problems at all. How about value? Well, like I said, this is a U.S. produced Blue Force gear option. Uh, it's going to be a little bit pricey. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> a lot of the US produced uh, tactical nylon stuff just is. But I think you get really good value with Blue Force gear. And that's why I do videos on it. Because you are supporting a US workforce. That's awesome. They are very innovative. They never sit around. Blue Force gear is always coming out with different stuff. And you're getting ultra, ultra quality from licensed manufacturer. In other words, everything on here, uh, like. Uh, like I said, the multicam pattern, someone's going to get a licensing fee on that. That's just the way it is. So street, I shouldn't say street, but normal price on the plate minus is $175. You can use my code shown at the top of the screen there to save money. I recommend you do so. That has been in operation all of 2013. It will continue to be that way. Thanks to Blue Force Gear for supporting the Nut and Fancy Project audience. Um, I love this plate rack. It is very light. It's only 12 ounces empty. It's trim. It's waterproof. It's extremely durable. It just has the bare necessities that you might want if you're going to integrate armor into your system. That's the Nut Fancy Review. See ya.